Okay. Got it. Let's uh let's go over the waiver wire. Uh as far as next week, the Raptors they have five games. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh it's crazy. So, wow. Uh keep it keep that in mind when you're on the waiver wire, right? Like we're gonna we're gonna suggest a good amount of players, none of whom are on Toronto, but you should be aware that Toronto has five games. Like if you need streamers, they are where to look. There's just there's no everyone, you know, they're all five starters are rostered and they don't have any bench players that get consistent minutes at all. So like picking the playing that five game rotation on a waiver wire is a little tough, but the other end, you've got bulls and pistons with just one game. And then you got Orlando and the Spurs with only two games. Um, okay. I'm going to jump in. My available in 50% of leagues player this week is Andrew Nemhard. Love this. Of the Indiana Pacers. 34% roster in Yahoo, 6% in ESPN. So we got the news that uh, yesterday that Tyrese Halliburton is probably out at least two weeks. He sprained his elbow and bruised his knee the other night. Um, crutches. And left that game on crutches. Left the game on crutches. And the Pacers, They just there's no reason for them to rush him back. He's the franchise player. They're not going to do anything in the playoffs. Um, a better draft pick would be nice, and this is an organic way for them to be like, you know what, maybe he doesn't need to come back before the All-Star break. Um, but uh, Nemhard is already the 125th ranked player over the past two weeks while playing 33 minutes a game. But obviously he's going to get a, a big usage boost with Halliburton out because Halliburton, um, last time I checked, still had the most touches in the NBA. Um, in the two games Halliburton missed earlier this year, Nemhard averaged... 14 and a half points, nine assists, five rebounds, and one and a half steals. That um that assists boost is the biggest factor. And also for this upcoming week, the Pacers have four games. I think didn't he go off against the Warriors? I, think yeah. I watched that game when they were they were missing Halliburton. They beat Golden State in Golden State. He jacked a few threes off the dribble that went in. We were like, oh my goodness, that hard. Yeah, he had 31 and 13 that game. Yeah. And I'm waiting for Shannon to make a Nemhard joke. No, Nemhard is a fantastic pickup. I think he is the premier pickup. Yeah, you know, he's the, he's the fantasy uh, free agent to target this week. Uh, um, aside from Nemhard, uh, T.J. McConnell, the cockroach, the cockroach. There you he's go. Waiting for you to thank you. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can't uh, kill T.J. McConnell. No, not at all. And, and even in, in the one game where. Uh, you know, Halliburton left left the latest game early, and McConnell saw an increase in, in minutes: twenty six minutes, fourteen points, eight rebounds, seven assists, two steals. Basically, absolutely, doing, yeah, one turnover. There you go, doing what he oh. does: thirty nine fantasy points. I do think that Nemhard's going to be the main beneficiary here, but McConnell will see additional run. He'll have some some duds, but he'll have big games like that mixed in as well. You know, Aaron Naismith could see an increase in value he's buddy steady. yep he's, he's been steady. steady and he missed he missed the most recent game i believe but uh he should Illness. be back in the starting lineup soon uh he's questionable for friday's game uh buddy healed of course is going to see an increase in minutes in the um in the post covid year in the 2020 21 season mcconnell saw a lot of time played 26 minutes a game that year ranked 67th per game in eight cat in 26 minutes so this year, if you think, you know, Halliburton's out, McCown gets about 26 minutes, he could be a top 75 player for this stretch. Uh, Ken, who is your available in 50% of leagues player? Not as good as the Nemhard pick. I do agree he's the headline. But uh, I like Royce O'Neal in Brooklyn. 40%, 48% of Yahoo teams managed. Uh, he's a stocks machine, 1.8 over uh, per game over the last uh, 10 games. Nets have four games next week and no Kevin Durant. So last 10 games, he's put up 11 points, three and a half boards, almost three assists, 2.6 three-pointers while shooting 50, 145%. But they need shooters now with Durant out. And I think they're going to, O'Neal's going to get a ton of minutes in the front court. Uh, but he's going to get you those non-sexy steel block percentages uh categories with some threes sprinkled in he's been yeah. he's been rosterable all season 
Yeah. A boring pick, a very boring pick, but I th- reliable and four games next week. It, it's super surprising that he's still available in 50% of leagues, but but here we are. I mean, he's, like you said, Ken, been boring, um, but with Durant out, I mean, he's he's been a top 25 player over the past week, um, you know, with, uh, with three games. It, that's only going to get better with Durant out. And there, there's other guys with the Nets, too, that we're not going to talk about. I mean, we mentioned TJ Warren earlier. I think he's going to see a nice boost. Joe Harris, if you need threes. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Warren eventually works. As, it, it, I wouldn't be surprised if they try Warren out in the starting lineup at some point. Or he'll just play 30-plus minutes uh, off the bench. But I like Warren a lot now. And- uh, my long shot this week. Grant Williams of Ken's Boston Celtics, 26% roster in Yahoo, 7% uh, in ESPN. This is all because of the news that Jalen Brown might be out a week or two. Um, uh, Smart missed two games before Brown missed this past game. In those three games, Grant, 39 minutes a game, 14 points, five boards, two assists, 1.7 blocks. He needs the minutes. Like like Grant Williams needs 35 minutes a game to be fantasy relevant, but I think he's going to get it here. Um you didn't mention his threes. He's draining uh, yeah, one he and a half threes as well a game. Yeah. Cor- corner office. That's Grant's Grant's location. Corner office. I like that. Um, oh, that I don't know how that pick wasn't. Grant Williams, anytime we mention Grant Williams, it has to be reserved for Ken's boring pick of the week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got to step up, just... Ken. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna jump well, in here. Say Shannon didn't give his lo- his regular pick. Yeah, my, my oh, I, I'm sorry, Shannon. No, no, totally fine. You know, I'm cheating a little bit here. He's available at uh, or he's uh, he's rostered in 59 percent of Yahoo leagues, but only 12 percent uh, of ESPN. That's the guy we've talked about many times. Walker Kessler, center, rookie center for the Utah Jazz. Kelly Kelly the Clinical Linux is out again. Uh, he's gonna miss uh, at least the next week, I believe. And Kessler is back in the starting lineup. Kessler's just, he's productive when he gets the minutes. There, there's, you know, he's not very consistent. There's going to be some, some peaks and valleys there, but he's a block machine. He's a rebound machine just over the past two games. Uh, he's averaging 26 and a half minutes per eight points, 11 rebounds, 3.5 blocks, uh, 50% from the, from the floor. Yeah, he he his field goal percentage on the season is still at 70%. So he's gonna kill you at free throws 55%, but he'll give you a nice boost in field goal percentage, rebounds, and blocks. I I also think there's gonna be a path here uh for you know, similar to what I mentioned with Beasley earlier. I think eventually Utah blows it up or makes some adjustments at least and leans on some of their younger players more heavily down the stretch. So I do think there's a long-term value with Kessler as well, where, you know, if you're, if you're desperate for blocks, um, he's probably one of the better options available in, on your waiver wire. And who's your long shot? Agreed. My well, long you- shot is uh, Terrence Mann, Los Angeles Clippers. Mann replaced Reggie Jackson in the starting lineup. It kind of went a little bit under the radar. Um, but it, it's to be determined. We'll see. I mean, man started three games in a row. Um, you know, Paul George has missed some time. Um, th- there's been a few other players I- in the Clippers rotation, like Luke Kennard, who have missed time as well. Um, but it looks like man is going to stick as the point starting point guard for this team. And if he does, you know, if he's getting 35, 40 minutes per game, which is what he's had the past two games, 35 and 41 minutes, there's upside here, you know, over those two games, 13 points, 6.5 rebounds, 2.5 assists, one steal and one and a half three pointers. You know, again, kind of like Walker Kessler, there's going to be some peaks and valleys, but man's not going to hurt you and percentages decent enough. 77% from the line, 51% from the floor can give you some value in certain areas, you know, some three pointers, um, maybe some steals with the minutes, but I like him quite a bit. My long shot of the week is pretty bad. Uh, it's Josh Richardson of the Spurs. Richardson, uh, the good part is uh, the cell's out for more than six weeks. Keldon Johnson's been in and out with injuries. They're obviously in wobble for Wemby mode. And Richardson's a little old. The Spurs would be very smart to showcase him the next few weeks for a trade before the deadline kicks in. But be warned, Spurs only have two games next week. So... 
maybe wait a week on picking up Josh Richardson, but I do think he's going to get monster minutes in San Antonio. And he's always been a guy who can kind of get your production across the board, a few steals, some blocks, threes, lengthy kind of two, three wing. Um, so Richardson's not a bad option, but maybe not ideal this week because again, the Spurs only have two games. Yeah. I mean, this is, I, I think this is just proof that you do some of your best thinking while in the bathroom, Ken. <laughs> Richardson's been solid. He, you know, since the calendar flip to January, uh, six games, 25 minutes for 14 points, 4.3 assists. 4.3 assists is really tough yeah. to find on the waiver wire. Uh, and, and then two three pointers per as well. Uh, like you said, with Vassell out, he's worth a look. And I, I do feel like he's a prime candidate to get moved. Uh, so they will showcase him. So we just down to the dull pick of the week. Yep. And uh, we've already had some. Grant Williams, they could be the dull pick every week. I'm going to go with uh, Bruce Brown in Denver. He is managed. He's available in about half of leagues on Yahoo. Uh, Denver's got four games next week. And Brown's one of those crafty guys who gets you stats across the board. His last seven games, 12 points, 1.7 stocks, 4.4 rebounds with great percentages, 53 from the field, 86 at the charity stripe plus almost two threes a game. So Bruce Brown and his steady production, enjoy that over four games if he's available. Try RotoWire free. Go to rotowire.com forward slash try and unlock the paywall by putting in your email. 